name is Nuri Sardar, uh, humble servant of Ahl Bayt uh, was born into a Pakistani Sunni family, a very loving family, may Allah keep them, inshallah. Um, third generation British, uh, we've been honoured that we have two um, esteemed uh, characters in our family, um, both from the Sunni scholarly side and the secular side. Um, I was born uh, Muslim, alhamdulillah, and raised in a very um, religious household. Uh, I chose to follow the path of Ahl Bayt in 2006 uh, when I was 15. I don't remember the exact time where I came across the story of Ashura. Um, I remember when I was young, my best friend was a uh, Shia Muslim and we all, he, he always used to speak, speak about uh, certain events in history to do with Imam Ali alayhi salam and I assume that uh, Imam Hussain and Ashura came up in um, one of those stories. Uh, I do remember reading a book that he had um, about the story of Karbala uh, in history starting all the way from um, the time of Umayyah. Uh, and moving on to Abdul Muttalib and looking at the two family trees and how eventually they met at Karbala uh, in the form of Imam Hussain alayhi salam and Yazid. Um, so I was well aware of the story for some time. Uh, even if uh, I only knew, didn't know it in depth, I knew the, the basic concept and idea of the story and what happened. Um, I do remember when Muharram would come uh, it would be known, made known to me that it was a time of mourning, a time to wear black, uh, a time where, for example, life changes, you don't watch TV, you don't go cinema, you don't go out. Um, so these kind of um, uh, small compasses that pointed towards the idea that there is a Muharram, there is a story of Ashura, a sad story, uh, were there with me for quite some time. I always see the month or the 10 days of Muharram and Ashura as um, the, the main part of the year. Um, I remember I wrote a short verse of poetry which says um, uh, I've waited 355 days for my eye to shed this tear. These 10 days are like a Kaaba and around it circles the year. Um, because truly that's how I see it. It's like the 10 days of Muharram are everything to me um, in that many ways it, it, it's 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 a time where you evolve as a person uh, and I, I found that every year alhamdulillah through the love of Imam Hussain alayhi salam, and the lessons that you learn from that day of Ashura I find myself evolving uh, in life in many different ways uh, be it through my akhlaq my maturity the way I see life so definitely I would say that every year I evolve uh, I would also say that everything in my life that I have, um, alhamdulillah, whatever it may be, uh, the minute things that I may uh, hold pride in or um, the great gifts I've been given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Ahl Bayt I would say all of it is owed to that 10 days. Um, in that 10 days, uh, much like many of the servants of Imam Hussain alayhi salam, um, there is nothing that I do uh, that really benefits myself. I do everything I can for the Imam. Um, I know um, there's times where in those 10 days um, I'm uh, working on uh, distributing my an album, if I have an album, uh, writing poetry for reciters as well as working at Ahl Bay TV, uh, editing and producing. And even though you know these are very small things, they're not really worth mentioning, but my point is that I, Imam Hussain has driven me to this point where I just spend all those hours um, working for the Imam um, because uh, even though he died, even though that day was over 1,300 years ago, we always say, oh Hussein, we wish we were with you. Uh, and the only way I can show that in my actions is by the little that I can do in those 10 days. I would say there were two big factors or three big factors uh, to my um, deciding to follow the school of Ahl Bayt the first would be uh, witnessing Dua Kumail and the words of the worship of Imam Ali salam and seeing how, not just that witnessing that the Shia worship God alone but seeing how they worship God 
through these amazing prayers that you can't find anywhere else. The second would be, um, I would say, reading the sources of the tragedy of Fatima Zahra السلام, in Sunni sources and history books, uh, countless, countless narrations, uh, clearly saying what happened uh, to Fatima Zahra السلام, on that day when her house was attacked. And the third uh, definitely would be my experiences um, to do with Imam Hussain السلام, and attending those majalis. I cannot explain why I felt the need to go there. I cannot tell you there was a, a specific story that I heard that inspired me or um, you know anything like that. I think for me, Alhamdulillah, I was raised in a house where you were always taught to be God-fearing and be pure and be humble. Uh, and um, these things that I was brought up with were so apparent to me in the story of Ashura. They were so... Uh, obvious that this was like the magnet of all those things and therefore it was the magnet to myself so I was automatically drawn to it Alhamdulillah so I think it's a simple matter of being um, God conscious, fearful of God and spiritual and if you are those things then automatically the story of Muhammad Hussain will touch you and I mean there's even um, uh, academics I remember saying that uh, the story of Hussein will 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 make even the most hard-hearted person cry. Um, so automatically, I, I was drawn to, it. and I could say that was a big factor in becoming um, a Shia. And uh, I think one aspect of it, definitely for sure, like I said before, when you're sitting in that majlis and you feel like you're a part of this movement, uh, mourning Imam Hussein alayhi salam, that position is a massive massive honor and I would definitely say that a big part of me becoming Shia is to grab hold onto that honor and that uh, pride of being there for Imam Hussain of being part of that movement that is the Husseini movement so definitely I would call that a big factor in my um, decision to become Shia what's beautiful about um, the commemoration of Muharram uh, Alhamdulillah, we are blessed to be here in London and London is known as, uh, they call it, the Karbala of the West. Um, it's the one place where uh, during the 10 days you can walk around and see Imam Hussein flags everywhere you are. You can see Majalis everywhere, you can see um, thousands of people are commemorating the Imam and his tragedy. Um, so, in terms of the commemoration itself, I wouldn't say there's one particular thing that uh, attracts me the most um, But what's beautiful about it is that it's so diverse You see people who are um, working so hard and sacrificing to put the name of Hussein Ali uh, Salam All over the city and in the form of uh, who is Hussein billboards and banners And you see people giving out water um, to people on the street and, uh, and roses in the name of Imam Hussain alayhi salam, with, with sayings of Imam Hussain alayhi salam attached to these, um, to these things. You see uh, people that are working tirelessly at television channels, you know, trying to broadcast the message of Hussain, and also you see the majaz, um, which subhanallah are so, so ram-packed out. Um, you know, it's, it's difficult, um, you know, as the years have gone past and the lovers of Hussain have grown so much more, it's difficult um, to buy the third or fourth of Muharram get a seat if you are five minutes uh, bef uh, coming five minutes before the lecture even starts um, so when you enter these majalis it's as if honestly it's as if you entered the um, the desert of Karbala in those 10 days it's as if you, you, you're there um, and the, there's a feeling that cannot be described in any words that I say uh, it cannot be described in anything that may be shown on TV or any poetry that any of us may write um, but subhanallah it's as if uh, we are all bonded together and we're there to, to mourn this great tragedy um, it's simply uh, indescribable I mean I to answer your question there's nothing I can pinpoint I love the 10 days of Muharram I, I, lo I love it in a bittersweet way in that for example Ashura um, I try uh, especially recently uh, not to smile you know, not to shake hands um, not to joke around because it's a very very sad day and, and you feel it, you feel the, the immensity of that day um, on your shoulders and on your heart um, so I love it but at the same time it breaks my heart All the characters of Day of Ashura 
are inspirational. Um, I think what's interesting is that every year you come back, you attach yourself to a different character. Um, so one year, for example, you might be heartbroken by the story of Fatima Sughra. One year you might be heartbroken and uh, inspired by the, by the loneliness and the courage uh, and the defiance of Muslim Ibn Aqil. Uh, you might be heartbroken by the story of Qasim by Ali Al-Akbar uh, or Ali Asghar. But for me, definitely, my inspiration will always be uh, alongside Imam Hussain alayhi salam, uh, Abu Fadl Abbas alayhi salam. Why? Because he represented all the virtues that we aspire to achieve on that day. He is so attractive in the way that he was selfless. I mean, attractive in terms of his virtues. It's 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 impossible not to fall in love with what he did, um, especially knowing that he did it, you know, just between him himself and the water. Um, and you know, we don't believe that these people are on the day of Ashura are dead at all. We believe they are alive. They are here. They're watching. Um, I have no doubt that Abu Fadl Abbas is watching me and us right now, and seeing what we're saying about him. And I have no doubt that these characters and these um, phenomenal personalities are still helping us uh, every step of the way. Especially in my life, I can say that uh, Al Abbas Islam has always been there for me uh, as a carer. Um, you could even say as a uh, uncle. Um, so my connection with him is something that um, I can't. Uh, really portray in words but it's definitely something that you know is there and will always be there inshallah i tried to visit karbala for a long time um and i kept trying to visit but i was always relying on friends and then people to, to to kind of take me and guide me uh eventually it came to a point where and it was always very by the way very heartbreaking to see friends that were going to karbala anyone who hasn't been to karbala will know exactly what i'm talking about um you know the fact that you're dying to go and you see people around you are always going i've written a lot of poetry uh, talking about this this kind of feeling um but there was it came to a point where i uh just said kind of made a promise to myself that i'm going regardless of who goes with me or what happens um, I literally just booked the ticket and managed to sort out a visa and I flew. It was uh, Arba'een of 2011. And I had no idea what to expect to be honest with you. Uh, you know, seeing the shri shrine for the first time. Um, you kind of paint a picture in your head that when you see the shrine, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll be torn into pieces or you know, you'll just die there and then. Um, but I had no idea what to expect. All I knew was that I needed to get to the shrine as soon as possible. Um, so after doing Ziyarat and Najaf and I was all alone, I literally just started walking to Karbala. One thing I would say about Karbala is that beyond that first Ziyarah when you meet your masters for the first time, um, what's really beautiful about it and what people don't really talk about is the fact that it grows on you every day. It's like, for example, you get to heaven. Um, you won't realize what it's like being outside of heaven once until you leave it. Um, but I do remember the feeling of visiting uh, Al Abbas Aysan for the first time, and I do remember the feeling of uh, visiting Imam Hussein Aysan for the first time. Uh, it was, it's a feeling that is so powerful, uh, and a memory that is so powerful that it still revisits me in my dreams all the time. Um, there are many times where uh, I dream that I am there, um, and it's, if it, it's not a dream as in one that is like you know any other dream. It's a dream as if you literally, your soul left your body, went to do the ziyara, and then came back and you feel it. Uh, and I remember one of the wishes I had for Imam Hussein alayhi salam, and I had three wishes. They say the first time you see the shrine, you have three wishes that are granted. One of those wishes was, uh, oh Imam, I always want to come back here. Um, and uh, alhamdulillah since then, uh, up till now, it's been about eight or nine times within four or five years. Uh, I've been blessed with the honor of, of visiting Karbala and uh, just like it is with Muharram when you evolve uh, and you grow every Muharram every time I go back to the Imam I go back as a new person, as a grown person I have different things uh, to request um, uh, from him for myself I have different 
uh, conversations with the Imam all the time. Um, I think now it's come to a point where, subhanAllah, I mean, you know, it was only a f five, six years ago where I never even knew what Karbala smelt like, but now it's got to a point where um, when I go there, it's so familiar to me that especially when it's Arba'in, I try to not do ziyara as much to allow the millions to experience their own ziyara because I feel like it's my home. Um, and I feel like the Imam uh, knows that I'm there and he knows um, that I've come. Um, and it's like the Imam is, is, is telling me, um, I can see you, I know you're there um, and I appreciate you coming in and, and I don't feel obliged to um, do the actual uh, ziyara every day to allow the other ziwar to do their ziyara because it's like my home. Um, Alhamdulillah, uh, it's got to a point where I get to, when I get to Karbala, it's not like a feeling where um, I've been deprived for so long and I've finally seen the shrine. It's more of a feeling of coming back home and seeing that familiar shrine for the, for the you know, once again. And um, being there to do the work of the Imam, uh, Alhamdulillah, um, I remember last Arba'in when we went, um, we went for uh, filming for Ahabay TV. Um, and it was very different because um, we were doing the work of the Imam. You know, it wasn't like, um, even though we, we, we even sacrificed, you know, many opportunity to, to do ziyara, but it was okay because, um, you know, we were there working for the Imam and it genuinely, genuinely felt like we were the um, Ansar or, you know, alongside the Ansar or serving the, or, or you know, something in that category uh, of, the, of, of serving the Imam. Um, and it's amazing because um, we are doing his duty um, but you always kind of get these experiences and these moments in Karbala uh, that it's like the Imam is telling you um, uh, thank you for your, the work you're doing, you know, I appreciate the work that you're doing I mean I've had many experiences of once, I mean my second ziyar I still remember my farewell to the shrine was uh, kissing the dome of Imam Hussein and it, it, that kind of just came out of nowhere. I remember another time where we went to do our final ziyara a few years later and the doors were closed. Um, but I managed to speak to one of the workers of the shrine and he let us inside where the dhrih was and it was completely empty. And we got the shrine of Imam Hussain all to ourselves. Um, you know, when we were filming for Hilbay TV last year, I remember we got chances to go onto the roof to film and uh, chances I got a chance to film the Mu'ak as they were entering the, entering the actual shrine. And I don't see these things as coincidences. I see it as like a privilege from the Imam. The Imam is telling you, um, I know what you're doing. I'm thankful for that little, for that, for that little that I'm doing. I'm thankful for that work you're doing. I'm going to show you that I appreciate what you're doing. Like I said, the Imam is living for me. Um, and whenever I go there, uh, I, I can feel his appreciation. Um, and that is something that I can, no matter what I do or what I say, I can never be um, thankful enough. The lessons I take from, or I try to take from the story of Ashura um, are the ones that, you know, all of us try to take from that day. Patience, selflessness, love, sacrifice, um, you know, uh, brotherhood, all of these um, values and virtues that are in that day but I think uh, the most important thing uh, is the humility and the submission to God and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and underneath that is the loyalty to Imam Hussain alayhi salam. definitely I would say that the fact that we come back every year and we mourn the same story um, we are even if subconsciously we are taking these lessons on board in our lives um, and every day, you know, for example, if I want, if I have the feeling uh, or the um, the desire to backbite, for example, and you know, suddenly um, I think, you know, what, don't do it. Um, that is automatically a story I've learned from Ashura. If I want to oppress someone, but something inside tells me don't do it, that's a story I've learned from Ashura. If I want to be humble or selfless, um, these are stories that I've, you know, lessons that I've learned from Ashura. There's even been times in my life where um, I've had to be very very selfless um, and straight away I remember that story of um, Imam Abbas and when he had the water in his hands and he threw it away and 
it's like that story just plays in my mind and, and uh, there's a voice in my head telling myself, um, you know, you say you love Abbas, you say you love the story and now the opportunity presents itself to you, what are you going to do? Um, so automatically, you know, you have to submit. Um, I think it's sad that so many people, they're the first people to do Majalis and the first people to cry from Hussein, the first people to do Matur from Hussein Islam. But they don't take the lessons on board from Imam Hussein Alayhi Salaam. You know, it's like Imam Hussein Alayhi Salaam is for the mosque, but, you know, outside the mosque, they have their own kind of um, lives and values uh, that they abide by, which are completely separate from the um, lessons of Imam Hussein Alayhi Salaam and what was learned on that day. So, me personally, um, I always tell myself in anything that I do in life, whatever it may be, um, I always tell myself, you know, there's only one truth there's only one right thing to do when you're given options there's only one right thing to do um, and I always uh, I take my entire code of character my entire code of living whatever I, I define what's right and wrong by the day of Ashura and I always tell myself not that I'm saying that I'm, I'm perfect you know we are all imperfect we've all got our imperfections and our sins and I'm a sinner but I would say that I try inshallah um in terms of the way I live my life to take from that story of Ashura uh, and live my life accordingly to explain the story of Imam Hussein Islam to a non-Muslim I think that when you look at the way non-Muslims are exposed to Imam Hussein Islam um, especially with reverts and the show of course is called Reborn uh, and I'm, I'm sure you hear many stories of how people were exposed to Imam Hussein Islam but interestingly no one is exposed to Imam Hussein Islam the same way there are people that they see, you know, they've seen a picture of the millions visiting the shrine and they just become uh, Muslim straight away. There are people that they need to, they hear the story of Muhammad Islam, but they need to study and research and look into it for years before they finally um, accept Islam. Um, not that uh, the one who hears uh, the story of Muhammad Islam has to become Muslim, but it's interesting to see that everyone is introduced to Muhammad Islam in a different way. Um, I've seen people that see the commemoration of Imam, the martyr, you know, the, the crying, the, the, the lamenting, and they're intrigued by it, um, they're brought closer to it. Uh, I've seen people who are introduced uh, to Imam Hussein Islam through, um, you know, these billboards that you have, who is Hussein, uh, and you know, the Tenth Day and many other uh, stand for Hussein in Norway, all of these great organizations that are doing amazing work trying to put forward the message of Imam Hussein Islam. But one thing I found so amazing, especially recently when I've, um, alhamdulillah, traveled to a lot of places, I've seen Imam Hussein Islam in the furthest reaches of the world where you never expect him to be. I've seen him in a small, tiny mosque uh, in the, the ghetto of Barcelona. I've seen Imam Hussein Islam in the most dangerous ghetto of Southeast Washington. And I see people that are inspired by Imam Hussein Islam in, in all these areas. Um, so I would say if I were to tell a non-Muslim about Imam Hussein Islam, I would tell them that Imam Hussein stood up for everyone. He stood up for the innocent and he stood up against the face of injustice and tyranny. He brought his women with him, he brought his children with him and he sacrificed them all for the greater good. As Imam Hussein Islam says, to be honest with you, the one quote I would give them um, is the quote where he says, um, even if you do not believe in God uh, in this world, at least be a free man. Um, that's, I think, what I would tell anyone who asks me about the story of Mohammed Saint Islam.